hurt himself in the middle there boys in that class he's being carried from the ground looks like a lower right leg issue at the moment scans have confirmed lin jong ruptured his anterior cruciate ligament during yesterday's 57 point loss to melbourne they'll be without lin jong for the rest of the season scans today confirming a ruptured acl late this afternoon the club confirmed the luckless 24 year old has torn his acl and will undergo a full knee reconstruction like uh, like the ones that have gone before him we just need to uh, help him with his rehab and get him back um, as uh, as big and strong as, as he has been and, and we'll have him hopefully somewhere near the start of next year. I remember seeing Lynn go down sort of holding onto his knee and I remember thinking at the time it was almost like I just knew he'd sort of done his ACL like I just had a feeling that it was going to be something more than just like a sprain or um, a small injury. Being close to it at that time, I, I was kind of hoping that it might have just been um, something like, like bone bruising, which it obviously, unfortunately wasn't, um, it was the worst news. My gut's twisted up a little bit because I realised that this injury might be worse than I first thought. I've gone downstairs and Gary's had a really concerned, deflated look on his face and just said to me, Bally, can you have a feel of his knee? And when he did that, I felt the ACL and I felt that it was completely ruptured. He had a loose feel on his knee. And it was that point that Gary and I told Jongy that he'd damaged his ACL. I was able to put in a call to Krista um, to inform her that uh, Jongy had been taken down into the room for further assessment by a medical team. Um, and I left a message saying if you'd like to um, meet me um, at a particular point in Etihad Stadium, I'll be able to bring her down into the room um, so she could uh, be with, uh, with Lynn at the same time. I remember getting a call from Chris Graham asking if I could come down to the rooms to see Lynn and I asked whether he knew what had happened or whether they had assessed the injury and he said that it looked like an ACL. It was only within a couple of minutes he, he came to harsh reality that he'd actually damaged his ACL. Went down and um, remember seeing Lynn sort of sitting under his locker um, and obviously, understandably, not in a great way. I remember Krista coming back up and sort of just walked up to her before she got back to her seat and just said, oh, do you know what's happened? And she said, yeah, it doesn't look good. Um, and yeah, it was just sort of, you don't, you get, you don't have a lot to say because there's, there's not a lot to say because you know they're probably going to miss the next 12 months of footy. So it's probably just more that um, comforting and just be like, he'll get through it. You just got to stick strong with him. And um, yeah, he needs a lot of help now. Started walking back to the change rooms and, and you know, the boys are, you know, just giving me hugs and telling me it'll be alright and, you know, I have their support and I probably, I started breaking down crying again and um, we just walked back to my lockers and even thinking like, <laughs> I don't know, this is the last time, you know, I've been Eddie had for a little while um, and I just, you know, I couldn't stop crying. Just put my arm on him and, and um, yeah, he's pretty upset and it's, it's never a good thing, but uh, just yeah, I said whatever you need, mate, I'm there for you. at the moment, um, have a few things playing on my mind, um, so you just think over and over, you know, what, what if I, you know, just didn't, you know, go for a kick, what if I just handballed it and just things like that, like, because it's funny, like, especially after the game, you, I, you know, everyone obviously is around you, supporting you, um, telling them you're there for you, and then, I don't know, you go home and because I wasn't getting the op till a week later, you just go home and everything's kind of like normal in a way. Like, I don't know, you just sit on the couch and watch TV and do whatever, except for the fact that, you know, I've got a ruptured ACL and, you know, I can't really, can't play and stuff, but Bob, Bob messaged me and said, you know, a bit of advice is to just take it 
day by day and um, not look too far ahead. Um, so I guess, you know, that's, that's what the plan is for me at the moment. Um, just taking it as it comes and then, yeah, probably like you said, not look too far ahead. Appreciates are agonisingly painful in the first five minutes after you do it. And that's because the knee literally comes apart, the bones separate. And anyone who's sustained a dislocation of any joint, shoulder or finger or anything, knows that a dislocated joint is very painful. So the first five minutes is terrible, and then the pain all subsides, and the player's often walking around relatively comfortable. The second phase of pain, of course, is after surgery. It's a very painful operation. The grafts are put through bony tunnels, so we literally have to drill holes through bone and bone doesn't like that very much. We have to harvest the tendons and that means stripping a tendon off a muscle, creating a huge hamstring tear. That's also very painful in the first week or two after surgery. The first five days after an ACL reconstruction are very painful. I to, I guess, sink in a bit more. Um, yeah, once you put the dressing grounds on and stuff and um, start rocking up to the hospital then um, yeah I think the most nervous time is though once you actually start rolling rolling you up to, to the theatre um, yeah and then I think then I'll be a bit more nervous then the whole week it was a bit weird because um, you know you've got the torn ACL but you can kind of move around alright um, so probably after the op it'll feel more it'll feel a lot better because I guess you know each day that goes by you're, you're making some sort of progress, um, even if it's just kind of just healing and, and recovering and not actually doing anything, but at least I know, you know, the op's done and, and, and all of that's fixed. It's just out like a calendar. You've seen these before, haven't you? Yep, yep. There was surgery. That's today. Yep. Um, this is another week of just acute management and looking after it. Yep. Doing some rehab stuff at home. Rom bike yep. next week. That's when we'll start to cross train properly. Yep. Um, and swim the following week. So I'll, I'll, that's my first swim. Yeah. Week Provided the docs are happy with your wounds, so they're yep. going to that off first. Yes. Everything going well. We should have you. Um, pretty good to play a few JLTs and, and into round one. Yeah, so perfect. It still fits pretty well. Yeah. So we want to. We know we have to wait nine months. And Doc Dy want to wait nine months for graft healing. Yeah. But along that way, it's important that we tick the boxes on your objective markers. So strength, power, knee control. Yeah. Um, so each each phase you go through, you'll be ticking little markers to progress into the next phase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what's from now, like, how often am I in the club? So this week we'll get you in twice, Yep. Um, and then next week I think we'll start to pick it up a bit more, That's three or four days a week, yeah. um, probably the, the two main training days yeah. for the next couple of weeks. But That's pretty much it, mate. So Lynn's currently two weeks post-op, um, ACL Rico, he's had a hamstring graft. Psychologically, I think there'll be some challenges. He won't hit those till probably about four or five months when the sort of rehab gets into a bit of a grind. So, so we, we tend to, um, we, we like to get the player's gauge on where they're at and sometimes we send them away on a little sort of, little downtime break for a week or two just to give them that, that mental reprieve, but you sort of take that case by case. Last one, stay there, last set. Good 
we've set a single now. Single, yeah. On both? Uh, no. Nah. Just left. The quad's not strong enough yet on your right to, yeah. to do um, single leg that size, so just left only. Yeah. Same deal, just max. You want to have a nap after doing that? Actually. What do you reckon you'll get? 19. 23. <laughs> Told you I don't have any carbs. What are you up to? 21. club for the first time in, a, in, in I think it's been a couple of weeks um, since I since I did the knee and I um, um, only went in there for about half an hour and, and, and just caught up with the, um, the physios. It was good to just kind of um, finally have something you know scheduled to do um, just because um, you know the past weeks just you know I haven't really had any structure um, you know I don't need to wake up for anything um, and so, yeah, I don't know. It seems kind of seems kind of little, um, you know, just to go in for half an hour to just kind of, you know, assess the knee. But um, you know, it was all really good. Um, got got a few exercises to do, and um, um, the knee's slowly feeling a bit better. Um, you know, it's you know a little bit like positive. There's not not much to it, but. Um, um, just, uh, I guess, you know, a feeling of myself, just knowing it's, it's getting a little bit better, um, is, um, uh, pretty positive news. You're happy, Sauce, with going off crutches? Yeah, mate, yeah. Perfect. We'll see you Thursday. This is, is this your first thing? This is my first one. Oh, great, great, great actual, morning, mate. Hey, bye. Oh, just, just my cool. first time I'll actually sweat. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I sort of did a couple of things last week. So, uh, Jongi, we'll just sit on a pretty easy temp tempo in there today. Just yeah, right. intro heat bike, not that's much of stuff. Jongi's just doing a lot of bike and swimming at the moment. They're the main two sort of aerobic type exercises that he can do. So, we're doing bikes at the club as well as using the EEL here at Vic Uni um, to do heat altitude bikes. It's one of the tougher times for Jongi um, because they're not, they're not running. Um, as far as sort of looking ahead at goals, when, when you can see running's not too far away but you're still having to do a lot of cross training. Um, so I think it is one of the tougher times. So um, I've just done my first probably kind of actual workout, um, just did a heat altitude bike. Um, so it, it wasn't um, you know all out but it was pretty solid. Um, you know it was good to just finally get a sweat going and I've got a swim now, my first swim, um, so that's you know good news. But I guess the bad news is I'm not that great at swimming. So really good to to continually do new things and and um, you know especially when you got other boys with you um, who are going through you know similar things and, and um, might have the same injury. So you know it makes it makes it a bit easier and you, and you don't feel as isolated. So um, so yeah, this this week uh, will be the first I guess you know maybe real week of rehab in terms of of actually the cross training and the working out and, and, and doing everything except for running and, and training with the boys. doing uh, heavy lifting uh, this week. Um, uh, I've been doing leg weights for a while, but I'm um, starting to do the heavy stuff to, to get the leg um, strong enough to, to start running, which is, uh, you know, in a few weeks now. Um, so uh, it's all kind of, um, you know, been the same to me. Um, roll in, do the leg weights and stuff and get it all done, do the bike and, and I'm not really looking, looking at, at it as a goal. Um, yeah, I'll just kind of wait and do, do, all my, do all my stuff properly and then and when it's time to run, I'll run. Or is it stonefish? Not it's great, right. is it? Some, some power, I'm trying, mate. Oh, yeah? Trying your hardest? That's what, mate. You're not going to have it yet. We're not, we're not anywhere near that. See the other side. 
Have you seen Chris's haircut? I, can't, I don't have the contacts. Oh, well, you can't see. You can't see him from that. Why have we got in the mirror? <laughs> oh, I can see, like, you know. I can't see the. Man, you got to tell us that sort of stuff when you rock up. By the way, I can't see today. Yeah. Just a little disclaimer at the start of the yeah, session. Yeah, contact lens in with this. Where are your glasses? Oh, my God. Yeah. Be amazing. That's it. Done. Hold on, mate. It's almost like deja vu every week. You're doing the same thing, and um, you know you're doing the same exercises. It has gotten a lot tougher in the past couple of weeks mentally. As bad as they have been, um, as boring and as lonely as they have been, um, I'm just kind of just coming in and, and doing what I need to do. And, and you know, I know in the back of my mind, as, as long as I do that, um, you know, I'll come back. I'll come back fitter and better. Um, but at the same time, it's it's pretty boring and dull, so but you know, just get it done. After six weeks, it's that low point of I think just the reality kicks in of you're now out of the side, you're not coming back anytime soon, and you're just starting to get an appreciation for how much work you've got ahead of you. Your leg is wasted away. You're no longer an athlete. You're a couch potato. Not just not a nice place. Just something you have to go through. There's no way around it. You just have to have to sort of crawl through those. Uh, tough yard. She laces up. You'll be a bit like boy, lady. Just roll them down. Hey? <laughs> Just roll your socks down. Yeah, the socks are fine. You want a double knot, mate, or you want a uh, single knot? Double. Double. Yeah. There do you, you do two loops like that as well? Yeah, I do. So do I. Yeah. Everyone always bags me about that. Nah, no, always. Everyone wants. What he just did to Tyler, you know how he does the rabbit thing usually? Yeah, I did what you did just then. Yeah, no. That's great, found someone else. The Alter G machine is an anti-gravity treadmill basically, and so it allows us to get you running earlier at a reduced body weight. So to simplify it, if someone weighs 100 kilos, we can get your 100 kilo body running at about 80 to 70, or 70 kilos, um, just to take some load off the joint. Yeah, yeah. come on, come let's on. do this. I can get on the Alter there. No, I'm not gonna get on here. How are you feeling? Good to go. Legs are good. Yep. Seven, eight. Ready? In between seven and eight? Yeah. So we're only getting up to like 12 kilometers an hour today. Um, and we're staying at 75% body weight. So just keep talking to me on how you're feeling. You're walking to start, uh, and then we'll get into it. Just a little pyramid build up to a certain speed and then back down. So you just kind of, you just tick off little milestones. So you do, uh, after that initial period, you, you do get some satisfaction, I guess, of once you're off crutches, then you, you, they're gone. Once you can walk, once, you, once you're on the bike, you can roll the legs over, you can start to get fit again, start to feel like you're in your body again, start to feel like an athlete again. Once you can jog, you can jog. Once you can run, you run. once you can sprint, then you can jump. And you just sort of tick these things off. Here he goes. How's it feel, fun? That's top speed today, Jongy. 12 k's an hour. Yeah. Feel okay? Yeah. Same. You'll do, you'll do, I think, three or four more blocks at that yeah. speed, and then we'll back it off. Carl's feeling okay? Yeah. Right. Hammy's quads, everything's even? Yeah. Well, if anything, just feel um, kneecap a bit. Kneecap? Yeah. yeah. That same sort of stuff that you had, you've been feeling the last little while? Uh, nah, it's more just like on, on top of the kneecap. Like yeah. Just... Right, mate. Yeah. First one done and dusted. <laughs> hey. Got through? Yeah. Morning everybody, eight past six. It is a public holiday. Thanks for listening to us. Uh, what a weekend we've got. We've got the parade today. They're expecting 100,000 plus. AFL grand final tomorrow. Just a good time to be alive. First day he runs will be a good day.
real good day. When you go outside and you just, and you run, like, you're not running fast, but it's like, I've made progress. Like, I'm, I'm on my way back and, and just, yeah, that's, that's a big day. the date I knew it was um, grand finally when he'd be running and I had the date in my calendar for probably six weeks before it actually happened to see him excited and looking forward to something was just so exciting for me I think it was infectious I, you know having such a rough time and then all of a sudden you have this yeah huge milestone I just said you know just take it all in appreciate it know that you've worked hard to deserve this and to feel like you've really achieved something. The day before the grand final, um, it's funny, I think you go through stages where, um, you know, you keep wanting more. It's just one of those things, um, you know, probably you take for granted, anyone takes for granted, just, um, you know, being able to move freely um, without any pain. The drive home um, after after the first run, um, you know, it was really good. I felt like it tick, ticked a big box. Um, felt like I was making strides, um, you know, I know in rehab, you know, you go through patches where you, you really feel like you're not making making any ground or, or, you know, doing anything different. But, you know, getting the first run out of the way um, and pulling up pretty well from it, um, you know, was a big step for me and, and it was, you know, a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Um, kind of was just so happy on the drive home. stand on a plate to get your weight first. Then you'll do two, two trial jumps each leg as a warm up. Um, then we'll do one each leg where it's a um, stabilisation. So you just, and then two, uh, two each leg where I'll ask you to hold. We're here at Victoria University using their biomechanics lab. Um, we're doing some drop jump testing with uh, Jongi today. The Vicon system is what they use for um, video games. So there's dots on the, on the body that picked up by the cameras and then that shows us how they're moving. We use the biomechanics lab at Victoria University um, with all our ACL risk guys uh, as a screening tool. Um, and we're using it with Lynn uh, in the lead up until, up until Christmas uh, before he returns to training. Yeah, so just make sure you're stepping off as opposed to, you know. Is it one leg. One leg. Single leg. Nice work. Okay, on in three, two, one, go. Nice. Stabilisation now, Jongi. We'll go right leg first. On in three, two, one, go. Hold, 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 hold. Yep. Nice work. Last one. On in three, two, one, go. Hold, 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 hold. Well done, Jogging. That's it. Shannon will um, put, to, put in a report for us. Yeah. And we'll just wait to get the report back. See what uh, we need to work on, if anything. So we're going to test your quadriceps and your hamstrings, the strength of them. So we do that at three different testing speeds. So a slow, medium and a fast speed. Um, so we can compare that to the results we have from before you hurt your knee. Yep. When the rehab crew says that you're good, you can get back to playing. Yep, perfect. Sounds good. So we're going to go into the warm-up, which yep. is 15 reps. So pull that back and off you go, 15. Be about that same speed? Yep. Cool. I reckon the warm up's the worst part. <laughs> Just keep going. Yeah, 15. I feel like I'm wasting my energy. Alright, so two warm up reps, off you go. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so they'll have them today. Oh, hopefully that's the last time I'll have to do that. You're looking great, mate. You're training well. And yeah, thanks, mate. Uh, feeling pretty good, actually. We filmed you the other week and you were winning. I'm sort of hoping to. Um, should, I'll be available for selection for the GLT games. So. A few weeks ahead of schedule. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. Mm. Forgotten Western Bulldogs midfielder Lin Jong looks set to play in the JLT series after recovering from a full knee reconstruction ahead of schedule. Eight months of mind-numbing rehab, but Lin Jong's knee has healed just in time for the Dogs' opening JLT clash against the Hawks. I'll be available for selection, uh, but you know we'll see how it goes. Obviously, I'm, I'm not too fussed with where I play as long as I can kind of get back out there. We've all worked really closely and incredibly hard with Jongy over the last nine or ten months during his rehab period, so it's fantastic to see him finish off his pre-season heading into the first JLT game. Yeah, he's, uh, he's very excited. I had a chat with him just before. He said he's, uh, he's not too nervous at the moment, but he might be a little bit um, tomorrow morning, I guess, but um, plenty of time before then, so I'm sure he can get some nervous energies out, but it's great to see. He's been training really well. He's explosive and um, he'll yeah, provide a lot for our midfield. This game back in the JLT series, um, it's pretty nervous heading into it, um, and kind of before and before the bounce and whatnot. Um, part of me is really happy to be back and out there and. and Glad I got through unscathed, and then yeah, I guess another part of me was um, just uh, remembering how, how you disappointed you can get in yourself after you play a bit of a bad game. So that feeling's kind of come back. Um, so um, you know, I'm a bit half and half. So happy to be back though overall. Jongi, Jongi, Jongi. Everything about <coughs> the progress that you've uh, you've made over the journey and. Sort of for you starting to play before you did your knee. Yeah. Yep. Um, what do you think were the main things that you added to your game, and why you started to become really influential? What do you think they were? Um, I think probably just that, that spread from the contest. Yeah. Um, um, probably uh, having more variety in terms of ball use. Um, you know, being able to use my hands or kick it, kick it when I'm out. Cross in the head, mate. Um, um, and, yep, yep. and probably uh, I think um, just my strength in contests, the hunt. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, which has always been a strength of yours. Yeah. Um, but even your scope to cover ground as well. Yeah. yeah. You know, remember you, you built your engine up to uh, transition really well. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and there weren't too many times where you looked gassed and you, you couldn't get involved. Yeah. So that was yeah. A, which which helped with concentration as well, just around the ground as well. Absolutely. Yeah. How far off that do you think you are at the moment? Um, Feel pretty good, yeah. uh, especially last week. Um, felt like I was, I was really spreading well, like in terms of high intensity running. Um, um, felt um, kind of best of, as good as I have been. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Good mate. Um, yeah, as I said to you last week, you had a bit of a look at it in JLT and yeah. sort of felt like you you needed a bit more rehearsal. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, but it was fantastic yeah. uh, that you came out last weekend and played so well against Geelong. And, you know, VFL level. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, obviously with Libby going down and, um, you know, we need you back. Yep. Um, so, well done, mate. Look, it's been a long rehab. Yep. And, uh, and you've clawed your way back. And, you know, we don't want you to just dip your toe in the water, though. We yeah. want you to be influential again. Yep. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, look forward to having you in the 22 again, mate. Yep. So, well done. Thanks, Good on you, buddy. Thanks. Good on you, mate. Lynn texted me on Thursday afternoon saying that he was playing um, and we were both so excited. It was just something that we could share together and you know he mentioned it just to me and hadn't told anybody else obviously before the team was announced and it was just you know so exciting and something so special that we could share together. Returning to your first AFL game again at that level is the most significant you know that morning um, or the afternoon of that game when you're preparing the realisation does hit in of I'm back. I'm on a mission.
hours of practice, they don't feel like working Overthinking, I don't mean to let the pain and hurting I was main stage with Tiny at a festival Realities of fuck is less than 24 hours plus and I'm back to working The wage isn't minimum But when you know your worth is more, you make your own curriculum Studying the industry, I know you see me killing them Nice, it felt so real, I had some moments I was living them Celebrity, civilian, walk amongst the breaks that you ignore The ones relentlessly pursuing every key to every door It's ever green and ever more if you're content with living normally I'm handing in my notice to the world on record formally yeah. I know this life is right for me uh-huh. I know the future's bright for me Real. I know my teachers lied to me I do it for the ones that came before and nearly died for me Recognition, I'm on a mission 